every time we put a Dell Express 13 next to a MacBook Pro 13, there's always one question that pops up. Which one is the best Ultrabook in the world? Now, if this was a few years ago, this would be a very tough question to answer. But this year, I have the latest version of both machines here in front of me, and I think I have an answer for you. Now, I bet there are tons of comparisons between these two machines out there already, but what I'm doing differently in this video is I'm not gonna go down the rabbit hole of comparing specs and performance because comparing these between a macOS and a Windows device is almost meaningless, in my opinion. Clearly, because they run on completely different platforms with differently optimized software. And in today's video, I'm gonna choose what I think is the most worth buying option of the two machines and compare them based on my real using experience in the last few months. The two options that I choose are both basic ones, both using Intel Core i5 CPU. Because in an Ultrabook, the difference between Core i5 and Core i7 is not too big, while you'd have to spend quite a bit more money. The 10th gen CPU version of the MacBook Pro 13 costs you a whopping $500 extra, while giving us two more Thunderbolt 3 ports and an extra fan. What a way to make money from Apple. Whereas with the Express 13, Core i7 version would cost you $200 extra. Still a steep price. It's only worth it if you want to do some light gaming on it. Otherwise, if you just need an Ultrabook to do things that an Ultrabook is meant to do, like office tasks, web surfing, or media consumption, then this is the version with the most value for money. And just looking at the price, the Xperia 13 already has a $250 edge compared to the MacBook Pro. But that's not enough to say that the Xperia is the worthier option. Let's break it down and see. Let's start with the most obvious difference, the operating system. Well, you don't actually need to start with the OS because, from my observations, many users are quite indifferent about this. They don't really care about the OS, either Windows or Mac OS is just fine. Meanwhile, most users seem to have already made up their mind on their favorite OS. They think that one is clearly superior to the other. So, I don't really see a point in convincing them because it will also depend on the type of work that they do and the software they use. For me personally, macOS is the one I prefer because I think that all the tasks that an Ultrabook running Windows 10 can do, a MacBook can as well, and it can do that very well, very smoothly, stably, and I prefer macOS interface and animation. I also think that macOS is ahead in terms of innovation, Look how it has changed and improved through the years. And most recently is macOS Big Sur. It brings a whole new type of experience. Meanwhile, Windows 10 still mostly stays the same all these years. Maybe with other types of laptops like mobile workstations or the gaming laptops, Windows 10 will have a clear win here. But in an Ultrabook, I personally think that macOS will provide a superior experience. So. A bit subjectively, I guess, I will give this one to the MacBook Pro 13. Moving on to the design. It doesn't take much to say that the MacBook is a pretty laptop. But putting it next to the four super thin bezels of the Express 13, it's almost like comparing a 2020 laptop to a device from a few years ago. And that's actually correct, because Apple has kept the same exact design for the MacBook Pro 13 since 2016, except for the sole addition of the touch bar. And thanks to the more compact design, the XPS 9300 only weighs 1.2 kilograms, compared to the 1.4 kilograms of the MacBook Pro 13. And it's also 1 millimeter thinner. But apart from the look, the weight and thinness don't make that much of a difference to your using experience. The Pro 13 is already very thin and light. But also, besides the sexy thin bezels, I also think that the XPS looks more matured and business-like. So, about design. 
the XPS takes the win here. I'll also add in I.O. as part of the design. Both have two Thunderbolt 3 ports, but I prefer it being on both sides of the machine like in the XPS. It allows for a more flexible plugging situation. In addition, the XPS has an extra micro SD card slot, but I don't really see the point of it really. A full size SD slot would be much more useful. About the keyboards, they provide pretty similar typing feel. The keycap size is also on par, similar layout, similar response speed. The difference is in the MacBook's touch bar, and also a very small detail that I noticed is that the MacBook's touch ID is much faster and more sensitive. It already unlocks when your finger is barely touching the sensor. But in that regard, the XPS 9300 has both touch ID and facial recognition through Windows Hello, so it's pretty tough to determine which one is the superior product here. So instead, I think we should move on to a much easier one the touchpad. It's really hard not to give the MacBook Pro 13's touchpad a 10 out of 10, because it's not only big, but it's also so, so responsive and accurate with macOS gestures. And it also lies in the Force Touch technology, which gives out haptic feedbacks, making every click anywhere on this touchpad feels awesome. Meanwhile, the touchpad on Windows laptops are always slanted downwards to accommodate the right and left clicking gestures. I think that Windows laptops manufacturers and Microsoft themselves have to come up with a solution to upgrade the touchpad experience immediately at least for premium products, because the touchpad is such an important element in a notebook that hasn't been paid enough attention to. Next up, the display. Both machines have a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, exquisite display quality and color accuracy, but I won't hesitate to give the win to the Retina display on the MacBook Pro 13 because it has a high resolution which makes for sharper images. It's only a small margin, but if you look at it from a 30 to 50 centimeters distance, you can definitely see the difference. The XPS also has a 4K option, but that will cost you $400 more. I think it's not necessary at all on a 13-inch size display, and it will also murder your battery life. Speakers Again, the Pro 13 snatches a clear win here. It has a slight bass, clearly separated ranges, better volumes, overall just a much better sound experience. Battery life is another very important element in an Ultrabook. Both of these machines will accompany you the whole day long, with use time of up to 7 to 8 hours. The 58.2 Watt hour battery in the MacBook has a slightly longer life compared to the 52 Watt hour on the XPS, but the difference is very small. Lastly, I'll touch on performance and cooling a little. I'm not gonna show any benchmarking because, as I said, Numbers are just meaningless when you compare two completely different operating systems. From actual using experience, I find that both machines satisfy every requirement of office work. You can open a dozen Chrome tabs across multiple windows and still have no problem at all. With 2D designing needs, both machines also do that very well. They both have a 4-core CPU, so multitasking with basic jobs doesn't pose much difficulty. Although the MacBook Pro 13 only uses the 8th gen Intel CPU, it's still a 4 core 8 thread, plus the better optimization of macOS, so it can still execute Office tasks very well. With heavy tasks, the MacBook Pro 13 tends to drop in performance in order to cool down when the temperature reaches 100 degrees Celsius, but the heat coming out of the aluminum chassis is still substantial. Meanwhile, the XPS 13 tends to push the temperature as high as possible, even over 100 degrees, before it starts decreasing in performance. But in return, the XPS has the heat-resistant carbon fiber surface, so it doesn't affect your experience with the outside of the machine very much. At the end of the day, the question remains, which one is the best Ultrabook? And after breaking it all down, we have a winner. Drum roll!
the MacBook Pro 13. It provides a better experience with its operating system, display, speakers, and touchpad. Meanwhile, the XPS only wins out with its contemporary design and better price. The MacBook Pro is more expensive, but it brings you a better overall experience and I personally think it's worth it. Nevertheless, there are still very good reasons to choose the XPS 13 instead. For its look and design, if you have to use Windows for working purposes, or if you could use the lower price tag, the final decision is still yours. Which one do you think is the best Ultrabook? The 2020 MacBook Pro 13 or the 2020 Dell XPS 13? Comments below your thoughts on this debate. And in the meantime, stay safe and healthy and I'll see you in the next videos.